One of the new features of the M1 iPad that Apple's made a bit of a song and dance about is the presence of a Thunderbolt port. And that means that we can use fast external storage. So I've been out and bought myself a new NVMe drive. I've popped it inside this Thunderbolt enclosure and we're gonna see how fast it is. Uh, compared to say something like this venerable Samsung T5 USB disc. Of course, the Thunderbolt storage will be much faster than the USB storage. It will be faster, won't it, Apple? So we've got a brand new 500 gig NVMe drive from Western Digital that I've put inside the Wavlink enclosure. I've previously reviewed this enclosure on the channel. It's not the greatest enclosure in the world uh, for thermal performance, but it will be fine for the purposes of our testing. Uh, I use these Samsung T5 drives all the time. They're a USB-C interface. They're capable of 500 to 550 megabytes per second in the right circumstances. Uh, the drive inside is based on a SATA interface. And then I thought I'd use this Orico IV300, which again I've reviewed previously on the channel. This also is a USB external SSD, but the SSD inside uses an NVMe interface, so it's uh, capable of double the speed of the Samsung T5, again, in the right circumstances. Uh, and today it seems not the right circumstances because we've had loads of problems with this drive uh, getting too hot and throttling. So I don't know what's going on there, but the results were inconsistent, so we're gonna just exclude this from the test. Uh, I think these two drives will make for an excellent test because they're at opposite ends of the speed spectrum. And we've got the M1 chip, of course, inside our iPad Pro, which is supposedly the same chip as what you find here in the M1 Mac Mini. So we'll test these machines against each other. And we'll also throw in an i9 Intel iMac that we've got in the studio. For doing the test, there are no tools that you can get on iPadOS that are gonna be useful to us. So it's gonna be a good old fashioned file copy with a stopwatch. So what I did is I got together a folder of mixed file sizes. and The total for the folder was about 26 and a half gigabytes. And then what I did is created a disk image file of exactly the same total size. So we've got a single file of 26 and a half gigs and we've also got a mixed folder of files at 26 and a half gigs. And we'll time how long it takes to read those files from these drives and how long it takes to write them back to the drives. That should be a fair test because in theory, the SSDs that are inside these computers are way faster than these external drives will be capable of. So any bottlenecks will be to do with the external drives. Uh, the final thing to say is that in theory, Thunderbolt should be capable of supporting the maximum speed of this NVMe drive. And I'll pop the specs up on the screen for this and the Samsung T5. Uh, so there should be no throttling and no reason why uh, an iPad that's advertised as having Thunderbolt wouldn't be able to achieve the maximum speeds of this drive. So I'll just grab my uh, trusty laptop with my spreadsheet of results on, and obviously we'll pop up a chart on the screen uh, to show you guys. Let's, um, let's start with the Samsung T5 on the M1 Mac Mini and we'll look at read performance first of all. To read that single file took one minute and 10 seconds. And then to read the folder of mixed files, one minute and five seconds, so slightly quicker. Now let's look at the M1 iPad Pro. Uh, to read the single file, it took one minute and 31 seconds. To read the folder of mixed files was one minute and 33 seconds. So when it comes to this specific drive for read performance, the M1 iPad Pro is only giving you about three quarters of the performance of the M1 Mac Mini. And of course the iPads have always been a little bit slow when it comes to writing files. iPad OS isn't exactly optimized for file copying. Uh, so that could be some limitations within the OS that's causing that slight difference. Uh, but let's just compare now the i9 iMac. For reading the single file, it did it in 48 seconds and the folder of mixed files took also 48 seconds. So as we've seen before, the M1 Mac Mini doesn't give you full performance through the USB port for drives like Samsung's T5. Uh, and it seems then that the difference for the iPad Pro makes that even worse because you're effectively getting about half the performance on the M1 iPad Pro as you would get on an Intel iMac. So if you're on an Intel machine, you can expect to get the full performance from these kind of drives, but clearly the M1 Macs have issues with certain USB chipsets, and the T5 apparently is one of those. Uh, let's move over to write performance on this drive. So again, we'll start with the M1 Mac Mini. We wrote that single file back to this drive in one minute and four seconds, and the folder of mixed files, that was one minute and 17 seconds. 
The M1 iPad Pro took two minutes, 10 seconds to do the single file and two minutes, 13 seconds to do that folder of mixed files. And so we got three quarters of the performance uh, from reading data and now we're getting about half the performance as compared to the M1 Mac Mini. But let's throw that Intel iMac into the equation. The single file took 51 seconds and the folder of files took 53 seconds. So we can see that this M1 iPad Pro isn't running anywhere near the performance potential of this USB drive. Uh, and also that M1 Mac Mini can't get close to it either. It's something that I've mentioned a few times on the channel now that Apple really need to sort out with these devices. Uh, and I'm sure it's a driver issue because there are some drives with certain chipsets that will work at the appropriate speeds, apparently. But surely the story will get better with Thunderbolt. After all, the iPad has always been a little bit slow with the USB files that previous generations were as well. Uh, but now, of course, Apple has told us it's got Thunderbolt support, so we'll, we'll try the Thunderbolt drives. Uh, first of all, we'll test it again on the Mac Mini. So using this Thunderbolt drive, we managed to read that 26 and a half gig file in 12 seconds. And that is a lot faster. That's a, a huge increase in speed, isn't it? The time it took to copy the folder of mixed files was 39 seconds, which uh, is obviously a lot higher than that, 12 seconds. And once we saw that result in context of the other results, we thought it might possibly have been a bit of an anomaly. So we'll test that again and we'll flash up the result on screen now. So how does the Thunderbolt port on the M1 iPad Pro compare? Well, to read that single file, it took 47 seconds. And to read the folder of mixed files took one minute and 20 seconds. So let's throw that Intel iMac into the mix as well. That one took 14 seconds to read the single file and 16 seconds to read the folder of mixed files. Uh, so when it comes to read performance with this drive, then the M1 Mac Mini actually slightly outperforms the Intel iMac. So I'm confident that we're getting full uh, Thunderbolt speeds from the M1 Mac Mini. Let's move on to the write performance. When we wrote the single file back to the drive, uh, the M1 Mac Mini did it in 23 seconds. The folder of mixed files, that also took 23 seconds. Let's throw in the Intel iMac because it's uh, basically the same, 22 seconds for the single file and 23 seconds for that folder of mixed files. So again, uh, the M1 Mac Mini's Thunderbolt performance is absolutely on par with the Intel iMac, uh, for this particular drive anyway. What do we expect from the M1 iPad Pro? Uh, well, writing the single file took three minutes, 44 seconds, and writing the folder of mixed files took four minutes and two seconds. So I think we can conclude that this M1 iPad Pro isn't offering stellar Thunderbolt performance, particularly when it comes to external drives. This drive isn't anything unique. It's a Western Digital SSD, as I mentioned. I've tested this enclosure on lots of different machines and the results are always consistent with the exception of this M1 iPad Pro. Uh, so it seems to me that there is something wrong with the speed of Thunderbolt. And lots of other reviewers have found the same thing. Anything from uh, as slow as we've seen today uh, to sort of 25% of the performance it should offer, in some cases 50%, but it never seems to be getting up to the full capacity or the full bandwidth of what is available on Thunderbolt. Bear in mind that Thunderbolt is a defined certified specification. It should be 40 gigabits per second. Uh, and it's clearly not achieving that. 40 gigabits per second equates to five gigabytes a second, uh, which is more than enough bandwidth to run an NVMe drive at full speed. Uh, but clearly this M1 iPad Pro can't do that. Of course, there's also the ability to add a Thunderbolt dock, and I've bought one of those, and I am gonna do some testing with the iPad to see uh, how that changes things. Uh, but I suspect it won't make any difference to the tests that we've uh, considered today. All it's gonna do is give us some extra ports. And the usability of those ports is really limited by iPad OS. Uh, think about external displays. All you can do is mirror your iPad's display, apart from a few apps like LumaFusion, for example, will allow you to send your video preview onto an external display. And incidentally, Apple shows that on their website, and I think that's a little bit misleading. Uh, others have said the same thing too. A dock would give you Ethernet support, it would give you SD card slots and other things, but all of those things are perfectly possible with the previous generation iPads and using a USB-C dock, which costs a lot less money than a Thunderbolt dock. So when you consider all of those things, I think the most likely use for the Thunderbolt port on an iPad Pro is for fast external SSD storage, exactly like this. Uh, and if it doesn't work properly, then what's the point in having the Thunderbolt port? Uh, you are in fact just much better off with these Samsung T5 drives. Uh, I use these all the time in my workflow. I've never found them to be too slow. Uh, they're absolutely fantastic. Never had an issue with them. Uh, links in the description if you wanna get yourself some of those. 
So I think I need a bit more time to really digest this situation and we'll probably discuss it in a bit more detail in the podcast. And I'll put a link in the description to our podcast channel. Uh, Check that out if you haven't already and please subscribe if you like that sort of thing. I'd be interested to know what you think. So let me know in the comments section, have you got one of these M1 iPad Pros? Did you buy it because Apple uh, spoke about Thunderbolt? Is that something you really wanted to use and are you using it? Uh, What's your experience been? Is it the same as mine? Uh, that the Thunderbolt port isn't really that usable? Or have you found a use case where it works really well? I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little test today. I hope it was useful for you in some way. There's more content coming. I've got that Thunderbolt dock, which I'm gonna test with this device and uh, we'll have that on the channel soon. So if you like Apple content or tech content generally, then why not consider subscribing to the channel? It only costs you one click and I really appreciate your support. Maybe I did enough today to earn a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you prefer, but in any case, I hope to see you again soon for some more geekery.